guys, this is Duran's Movies, and welcome to a bit of a different video. Now, a lot of people lately, or at least in the past year, or pretty much ever since the Warcraft movie was announced, they've been asking me to do something about the Warcraft movie. So, since there's all this new info and all the stuff new, like the new stuff that we learned, I thought I would finally do like a video covering some of the lore you should know about all of the events that are gonna happen during the movie. Now, of course, I mean, you can just go and watch the movie just like everyone else, but it is always just so much more enjoyable once you can, like, make all the connections and you truly understand the entire story and everything because the movie itself is going to be kind of isolated. It's not going to cover the entire story, but if you kind of understand the entire thing, it's really going to be a lot more enjoyable. So far we have some details, a hint here and there, but we still don't really know what the movie will be exactly about and what the focus will be on. I mean, we do know it's like certain that it's going to cover Warcraft 1 and a bit of a Rise of the Horde. And from what I've heard in the past few days, it'll be going more about, uh, you know, before the entering the portal and the actual war, like the attack on Stormwind and the assassination of the king. I know a lot of people here expected that they will cover the entire Kill Jaden and Rezul plot and the destruction of the Draenei as a race, pretty much what the orcs did. But I think it might be even better to avoid that entire story because it would kind of complicate the movie. I mean, if it was like a series like Game of Thrones, which I would totally like, but if they did like a series, they could totally cover that. But since the movie is going to be like two hours or something like that, it's really gonna be confusing if they cover all these different like stories because they would have to explain a story about the Eredar, about the Naru, kill Jaden, like why is he chasing Valen, and then they have to later on explain the role of Gul'dan, the Eye of Sargeras, and all. All that stuff and it's just like too many different big stories into one and I don't really think it would work too well with the movie. A bit of a bad thing, at least in my case, or like my opinion, is that the entire movie will be kind of a, in a different universe and it's a really, really confusing method. I mean, we have the main universe in which pretty much everything that is happening in the lore is placed. We have the alternate universe, which is Borosa Draenor, and now we have the entire cinematic universe. Now it's kind of close to like the main universe although all of the stuff is still canon and they change quite a few things so that the movie can flow better and they don't really have to stick to the rules that were set by the main universe so it is kind of confusing but I can kind of understand them because they designed the whole Warcraft 1 and Warcraft 3 era when they were just like a small company in the 90s they didn't really expect anything like a Warcraft movie or like World of Warcraft to ever happen so they didn't really think long term so they made a a lot of things that kind of bound them in place so i'm totally not surprised about it because they kind of can get rid of the bonds and they can kind of be a bit more creative and like make the movie a bit better but just don't be surprised once you see some weird stuff in the movies like the entire alliance banner which is the new alliance banner not the old one of like the initial alliance and maybe even dwarves that only joined like later on and I mean there are just a lot of cases like this going on and as long as it isn't something like completely lore breaking that like changes the entire story I'm really fine with it I don't really think they shouldn't change some stuff if it's gonna make the movie a lot better now a good thing though is that they have shown us some characters that will be appearing in the movie. Now of course I can't cover all of them in the videos because they have so much lore about them. But I did make lore lessons on almost all of them. Yes I know like the lore lessons are pretty bad. I have the like the old ones when the channel was going in a completely different direction. But still I think it will suffice if you want to learn more if you don't know too much about the character. The characters we know so far are Sir Endo and Lothar. He's one of the best warriors of like all time and he's descendant of the Erati bloodline which relates to the original humans that created the entire human civilization. Now in the real universe he died during the second war or kinda near the end in the battle against Doomhammer but he still played a big role as a supreme commander in the first war and I'm pretty certain that we will see quite a bit of him in the movie. I did make a lore lesson on him so if you want to learn more about his lore you can just click on the link on the screen. After that we have Lane Vryn and it's kinda obvious he's the father of Varian Vryn and he's the king of Stormwind. He also played a vital role in the first war but sadly was assassinated by Garona Hef Orkin who was possessed by the Shadow Council. Also in the movie we can see his wife called Lady Taria, I believe that's how it's pronounced, which is a completely new character like we know nothing about her and I'm guessing it's just one of the things they're gonna add in the entire cinematic universe as long as it isn't like a super important role. I'm kinda fine with it. Relating to Lane Brain, we have Garona Half Orkin. Now, if you have seen the movie stuff, you would think she kinda looks more like a human than an orc. 
Which is actually the thing in the lore, it is actually known in the lore that she looks a lot more like a human. But in fact, she has nothing to do with the human, she is a half Drena, half orc. And her mother is actually a sister of Marad, who, well, there's like no really like nice way to put it, she was raped by like orc warriors. And then she was magically aged and controlled by Gul'dan, which made her what she is. Now she played a vital role in the first war, on both the Alliance and the Horde side, and I have no doubts that she will also play a big role in the movie as well. Later on we have Mediv and of course he had the most important role in both the first and the second war as he is pretty much the guy that summoned the orcish horde. Now he's also a guardian and a very very powerful one at that and at the time he was possessed by Sergeras which really made him do what he did. Now he didn't really do like he didn't summon the orcish horde because he was evil he was actually possessed by Sergeras. Now next to Mediv we will also see Khadgar who is a student of his. Now I'm not certain what they would really do with Khadgar since he didn't really do anything like significant during the first war. He only like became prominent during the second war once he killed Medivh later on in the human expedition to Draenor when they set out to get rid of the Horde for good. So he might just be introduced and if they do like an entire sequel thing with the Warcraft movie he might kinda play a bigger role. Now also I have a lore lesson on both Khadgar and Medivh so you can check that out if you want to learn more about them. After that, on the orcish side we have Gul'dan, who I think is the second most important role after Medivh as he is in a sense like the Horde side Medivh, but instead of being possessed he is just lusting for power and is like completely evil. His original plan for taking Azeroth was so that he can take the Eye of Sergeras from the Tomb of Sergeras and he can become like insanely powerful. Of course he was tricked by Sergeras and killed once he got there, but still he, that was one of the main motives. Now I'm not certain if that will be a thing in the movie or not since I've heard that they might change some stuff with the entire Gul'dan and the invasion of Azeroth. But but at least you know what it was about. Now on Gul'dan I have both a 1 minute lore video and a full one about Gul'dan so you can kind of learn something for both and if you don't have time you can just check out the 1 minute lore video. After that we have some of the important orcs like the orcish warlords, we have Duratan the leader of the Frostal clan and one of the only ones that actually stuck to the orcish traditions and was honorable and not just like lusting for power and conquest. For that he was exiled and later on killed by Gul'dan's assassins and his son Troll who was still a baby was left there for dead until a human called Adelas Blackhorn picked him up and raised him as a gladiator and after that the entire new horde was created. All in all I think he will play a big part in the movie and I also have a lore lesson on Duratan if you want to check that out. Next on we have Orgrim Doomhammer and he's from the Blackrock clan and he's also one of the honorable orcs who was sadly tricked and he did a lot of bad stuff with the Horde. In the main universe he saw through Gul'dan's trickery and killed the Warship Blackhand and took over the Horde which he almost led to victory against the Alliance only if he was not betrayed by Gul'dan who went on his actual task to take the Aya Sergeras and it just showed that he didn't really care about the Horde at all, he just wanted the power for himself. But nevertheless, Orgrim is still considered as one of the most important orcs of all time and even later on he helped troll and form the new Horde and that is pretty much when he died. As usual, I have a lore lesson on him if you want to learn more. And lastly we have Blackhand and Blackhand isn't that important but he's still kinda important if that makes sense. He was voted as the war chief of the Horde and he thought he had like superpowers but in reality he was just a puppet of Gul'dan who just used him as a decoy so that Gul'dan can like rule the Horde from the shadows. In the end he was killed by Orgrim Doomhammer but that was after the first war but he still played a big role in the formation of the Horde and the first war so I'm guessing we will see quite a bit of him in the movie. And I also have a lore lesson on him if you want to learn more about him. Alright that is all there is for the characters, I'm guessing we will also see a lot of other characters like Nerezul, most likely Grom Hellscream as he was important during the time and all the other like warlords of the clan possibly like Killrog, Deadeye and Cargill Bladefist or something like that. Now this video itself isn't really a lore video, it is more of like a summary with all the lore lessons linked into it so you really have like 2 or 3 hours of lore if you really want to get prepared for it and watch those videos. I would also highly suggest that you check out the book called Rise of the Horde. I still haven't done a summary on it but I'll probably will soon. I think it's the single most important thing that you should really do if you want to prepare for the movie because you can learn how the court was created and how the entire first war was started and then 
formation of the horde and all of that stuff. And I can definitely guarantee that it will clear out a lot of stuff for you if you haven't read it before. Alright, that is all I have for this video. Now, do suggest on what you would like to see on the channel. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, as it really helps out the channel and keeps all the videos going. And thanks a lot for taking your time out of the day to watch this video. And see you next time.